I wanted to get into some uh, current events. It's a matter of Muslims and their religious Sharia law that we've been dealing with in this nation and in Europe. If we as a nation allow so-called peaceful Muslims to practice Sharia law alongside the laws established in this nation, we will have to also allow those of the Jewish religion to practice their laws of Judaism. For example, both have in their laws the stoning of those caught in adultery. You have seen the Jewish people, we have not seen the Jewish people stoning those in adultery, but rather made them come under the laws of this nation and pursue the court system to seek a divorce. If they were to stone anyone to death, apart from the laws of this nation, they would be committing a crime. They could, at one time in this nation, excommunicate those doing such acts like adultery, homosexuality, child molesting. Yet today, for example, you could not express, they could not express their religious laws against homosexuality because the laws of this day openly allow this behavior and now enforce this on all. To do otherwise would be considered a punishable crime. We have not seen Jewish or Christian religions pursuing purchasing large sections of this nation, seeking to form another nation in this nation, as we are beginning to find so called peaceful Muslims doing today. Now we have seen in our past history in this nation, radical so-called Jewish and Christian sects attempting to do this, ending up with local and federal government agencies sent in to stop them. The question would be, why aren't they doing this with the Muslim groups doing this today? They forbid local and government agencies from entering their facilities. Some of these areas are fenced in with guards at their gates. We can go to the past to find a real solution to this. Going back to Rome, a government much like ours today, which tolerated all religion as we claim. Here's one example I will use from the Christian book, the New Testament Bible, where Jesus is asked to judge the situation of a woman caught in adultery. Jesus knew that if he had let her go, they would have had him stoned to death for thinking to override the law of Moses in the Old Testament. Now, on the other hand, had he said, stone her to death, they would have done just that. Then they would have called the Roman authorities to have been arrested for murder because her profession was legal in Rome. So he bides his time and under his breath asked God his father, what do I say? I am damned if I do and damned if I don't. Here's the answer he gave them that will lead to my point in all this. You who are without sin, throw the first stone. That's what the English translation says, but doesn't bring out. I want you all to see. Here's a deeper running what Jesus had said and what that religious crowd heard for the first time in their self-righteous religious life. You who do not have the sin nature, which came to the fallen nature of Adam, thus would have the same potential to commit the same act of adultery, throw your stone of judgment. It goes on to say that from the least to the greatest, all dropped their stones and walked away, understanding for the first time, you who judge another, you do or have the potential to do the same thing. Remember Jesus said, judge not at all. But you measure up, we measure back. Remember Jesus had addressed this matter of adultery in an early confrontation with these religious leaders. We had to say to them, you have said, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, if you had looked at the woman with lust in your heart, you have already committed adultery. And if you hated your fellow man, you have committed murder. They were given a lesson in a true meaning behind God's reason for the giving the law in the first place to see the helpless condition they were in. 
along with us all, the impossibility of ever keeping any law. Law only strengthens what we call sin. It was called the good work of the law, the good work of exposing. God bless you.